Hello and welcome to the latest edition of C Step Podcasts. Today's podcast is being delivered by Dr. S S Krishnan. Dr. Krishnan is a principal research scientist at C Step. He holds a master's degree and PhD in computer and systems engineering from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, USA. Prior to C Step, he worked with the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. His expertise and work experience lies in modeling, analysis, and policy aspects of energy efficiency, low carbon growth, and industrial manufacturing. He has worked closely with several industrial bodies, committees supporting the formulation of India's twelfth five-year plan, and the Planning Commission's Low Carbon Expert Committee of the Government of India. Dr. Krishnan has been invited to make presentations at several national and international conferences, and he has published with leading academic journals. Thousand fifteen is an important year in defining global development pathways. Could you highlight two or three key differences between the Millennium Development Goals and the post two thousand fifteen Development Goals? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the Millennium De- Development Goals or the MDGs uh, came out of the Millennium Declaration uh, in two thousand, uh, which listed about eight goals, which were perceived as being extremely important for. World governments and society to uh, pursue uh, as being the largest, which would give the largest benefits to human society as a whole. Uh, uh, however, what happened is that after the Rio summit in '92, there has been a movement towards sustainable development, and the UN, in fact, had two parallel tracks of discussion happening, uh, and this uh, uh, got further amplified in the Rio Plus 20, which happened in 2012 at the Earth Summit over there. Uh, where the talk of sustainable development goals uh, came into the picture, and and the UN has very formally got these two parallel tracks of discussion happening. Now, there are many differences that have been studied, and people have talked about these differences. And some of them are that the MDGs were sort of talking about individual indicators at the micro level in terms of clean air, in terms of uh, infant mortality, in terms of poverty at the individual level, whereas. Uh, the sustainable development goals are trying to look at more of the larger picture, uh, the individual level goals, but also at the public good uh, goals. Another difference has been that the MDGs were focused more on uh, the developing countries, whereas SDGs people are now making an effort to make it apply equally to developing as well as developed countries. Uh, another difference is also that uh, the MDGs did not have any particular target in mind in terms of measurable indicators which would be enforced in any way. It was pretty much left to the countries to sort of try to figure out for themselves. Whereas hopefully there are people trying to say that SDGs need to be a little more. There needs to be more commitment and leadership shown by the countries uh, as regards the SDGs. Uh, so some of these differences have actually uh, amplified themselves in the SDG discussion. One more important difference, in my view, has been that MDGs were designed primarily by government agencies with advice of experts, whereas SDGs, I think, the UN has followed an extremely different, multi-stakeholder, participatory approach, where there have been political leadership has been involved at the highest forums. Also, you have had government participation, experts uh, elicitation. As well as the general public, in a sense, because there have been websites there have, where people could contribute from different parts of the globe. Individual citizens could do that, uh, as well as a survey. In fact, there's a my survey which the UN carried out, where people have been asked to identify what their top six priorities are in life uh, out of a total of 16. And as usual, the highest were healthcare, poverty, uh, education, and uh, you know, clean and safe drinking water, and so on and so forth. So I think there have been many differences between the MDG and the SDG, uh, and hopefully we will see uh, the outcome of the SDG discussion uh, after the summit, which is happening in New York in September. Thank you. Um, now, if we come down from the global level to a more national level, um, what are India's plans as contributions to these uh, sustainable development goals? See, India has always. Uh, had 
some form of sustainable development in its uh, plans uh, that it has been drafting, the five-year plans that India has been drafting since independence. Uh, in fact, there have always been indicators on poverty reduction, on rural development, on economic growth, uh, on forests, on conserving of forests, conserving marine ecosystems, oceans, all of that. Uh, and there have been different indicators used in different plans. For example, the 12th five-year plan which was released in 2012 uh, in fact, is the first plan which talks about uh, and emphasizes the need for faster, more inclusive and sustainable economic growth. Uh, and there's a whole chapter devoted to sustainability. So in fact, that is itself straight off the kind of importance that the government has given to sustainability in its uh, long-term planning process. Uh, the other issues are, uh, of course, within this chapter, there are a number of indicators which have been suggested. Uh, some of them have got to do with providing sustainable energy, whether it's solar or wind energy. So India is making efforts in those directions. In addition, India has always been having a number of inclusivity related indicators. Uh, for example, on rural poverty, on energy access, on uh, rural health, infant mortality, on the health of women, uh, on the uh, uh, poverty aspects in both urban poverty as well as rural poverty. And there are indicators which are being monitored uh, in India on an annual basis and these are reported in the five-year plans. So, so, so this is one set of indicators which show, which kind of give an idea of the kind of direction in which India is moving and plans to move. The other aspect is in the uh, areas of sustainable energy. India has already had ambitious targets of 20 gigawatts of solar energy and about uh, 100 gigawatts of uh, wind energy potential uh, has been announced by the government. But the solar energy uh, goals have recently been upped to a massive 100 gigawatts by 2022 and wind to 60 gigawatts installed capacity by 2022. And people are even talking about 200 gigawatts of wind by 2030. And 2030 coincides again with prop the possible time frame of the SDGs. So I would expect that India's contribution to SDGs and the effort towards SDGs would be uh, uh, in multiple dimensions. One of them would be the eight national missions that we have under the Prime Minister's Action Plan on Climate Change. Also, all of the different inclusivity and poverty and health related indicators that we have in our five year planning process. Uh, and the governments, uh, the different governments, the central and the state governments, which monitor these indicators uh, periodically, but also in the massive amounts of renewable energy that we are trying to add, uh, while at the same time improving the quality and affordability of clean power and accessibility, energy access to people in the rural areas. This step recently completed a study at a more regional level focusing on Karnataka and its green growth strategy. Um, could you tell us a little bit about this work? Yeah, the, uh, I feel the most important, one of the important parts of this study uh, was not just in trying to identify what the different sustainable energy uh, projections or uh, growth that could happen in solar and wind energy going forward for the state of Karnataka, but also tying up these different sustainable development pathways with the concepts of inclusivity and with the concepts of actual social development for the people of Karnataka. This, the major focus of our work was to show policy makers in Karnataka, both at the political as well at the administrative and, uh, other, and the implementation levels at both the state and local level to actually show that low emission strategies could contribute to overall well-being and poverty reduction goals it could meet these goals and this in fact would ha in fact help policy makers understand that by locking in sustainable development as part of the planning strategy uh, there would be greater social acceptance and if there is greater social acceptance and appreciation and benefits then automatically the policy makers uh, you know are very very happy to actually go ahead and implement these uh, strategies the other aspect I think which was very important was that we were able to also quantify some of these benefits. Uh, we were able to do some very detailed modeling of the different options that Karnataka has in order to move in the next 20-30 years. 
but also be able to show to the policy makers in a very very pictorial manner uh, how what the benefits would be financially but also in macroeconomic terms in terms of jobs in terms of the en better environment the rural environment the health benefits uh, and all of this to, so that policy makers could then use this to prioritize uh, and decide okay let's you know how do we prioritize a set of options the 10 options that are available how do we prioritize them given the resources that we have uh, as a result the uh, our analysis in fact to make it more useful to policy makers and relevant also included the current plans of Karnataka because government plans actually are made well in advance so we use the next five year plan that is already available with Karnataka we factored that into our research and also the kind of financial resources that would be available in the next five to ten years so we try to factor in those constraints as well so that to provide a more realistic picture that policy makers could actually relate to and appreciate more and therefore they were able to appreciate the quality of the work as well as the results coming out of it and therefore they also felt uh, based on some other feedback that we got that some of these recommendations were actually actionable going forward. Thank you so much Dr. Krishna. Thank you very much.